Hello everyone, and welcome back to another Nuclear Craft uh, update video. Um, I've only got two more to do now before um, I'm done with the 1.7.10 versions, uh, and then I'm going to be working on moving up to 1.10.2. Um, so, definitely need to move away from 1.7.10 now, uh, but first of all, let's get these two update videos done, and then we can leave it behind and move on. Um, and the first 1.10 update is probably just going to be a direct port. So it's probably not going to be too much new content, but that's probably what's going to be just a new, just a port up. But let's just get these videos out of the way. So first of all, 1.8 um, came out a little while ago now, but um, first of all, uh, it added a lot of info tool tips. As you can see, you can hover over stuff and it will tell you about things. So for example, blast with some blocks and you know whatever. It just tells you about stuff so if you hold, hold hold shift over it. it. Tells you about all the different coolers and and everything. It just tells you about everything, which is pretty cool. So I like that. Um, as you can see, I'm on. If you if you know about it, I'm on version 1.9b, um, which is the latest version for 1.7.10. And we'll, I'm basically just about to do a 1.9 update video, but this is 1.8. But there you go. The first thing is all of this information, and especially on the fuels. There's a lot of info on the fuels. Um, so just hold shift on anything it tells you. You know, hold shift for info, and it gives you the info. So pretty simple. Um, so uh, next thing, added portable lithium-ion batteries. So you can see here. Lithium ion batteries, battery capable of storing 10 million RF uh, or 10 mega RF. And the way this works, you just plug it, plug it into somewhere where you can um, get power for it and it just gives you energy. So there you go, you can see it's charging up and it has a maximum RF capacity of 10 million RF. So that's pretty simple. That's, that's, that's pretty much it. Um, now, to make these things uh, is a little bit of a process, but it's meant to be because this is meant to be quite high end energy storage. Um, you need to make them via quite a complicated process, which I'm going to show off here. And as you can see, the recipe for these lithium ion batteries is, uh, well, it's, it's four lithium manganese dioxide ingots, four hard carbon ingots, four crushed lithium, and four advanced plating. Um, and the recipe in the nuclear workspace is just this here. Um, now, as you can see, um, this is not running, and that's obviously because, as we know before, the assembler won't run um, if uh, you don't have at least one more of each material. But now there's a new button up here, and you can ch change this between keep and use. And if you're in use mode, it will use up the materials regardless. And there we are. We've got ourselves a lithium-ion battery. There we are. So that's just a new one. So that's how you craft them. And you can obviously set a little little sort of system to, uh, you know, to, to, to automatically process them, whatever. Okay, so there we go. That's lithium-ion batteries. Uh, now, the power of uh, power of fission reactors is no longer explicitly dependent on the size of the reactor. That what that means is what used to happen is that there used to be a multiplier for the power dependent dependent on like the actual interior size of the reactor. But as you can see here, um, we've got a two by one by one reactor. We've got one cell for LEU, uh, and you can see we're producing 200 RF per tick at 80 heat per tick. And here we've got a 3x2x2 reactor, obviously bigger, but we've got one LEU cell compartment in there and it's producing the same amount of power. Um, if this was version 1.7 or below, this would have produced more power. Um, but now that's got, got, you know, we've got rid of that now. So there's no random multiplying, it's just, you know, it's just the power you get depending on the number of cells you have, which makes a lot more sense. So that was a very good suggestion from, I think, Pior again, uh, or Pior, Pior. Still don't know how to pronounce that, but. Um, a very good suggestion because that's really made things much more interesting. Um, now, this is quite big. Added steam fission reactors. Um, there's temporary mechanics, so it produces um, steam, dense steam, or super dense steam, depending on the um, the steam output of the reactor. Um, if it produces less than 200 millibuckets per tick, you'll get steam, normal steam. If it produces anywhere between 200 and I believe 40,000. Uh, possibly more than that uh, millibuc millibuckets per tick, then you'll produce dense steam, and any more than that, you'll get super dense steam. And the way you deal with all those different types of steam is you need to use these steam decompressors. And if you have super dense steam, you're going to need to use dense steam decompressors. And you need to compress the steam all the way back down to normal steam, and then pass it through steam generators. Now, actually, the best way of doing this is to aim for reactors which produce dense steam, um, because um, it's much more easy to deal with because uh, you can feed the dense steam into these steam decompressors and the steam decompressors 
uh, the, they decompress uh, dense steam at a rate of 2 millibuckets per tick of dense steam to 2,000 millibuckets per tick of steam. And you can feed the steam right into an adjacent steam generator, which uses up 2,000 millibuckets per tick of steam to generate 4,000 RF per tick of, uh, of energy, of power. So that's the best thing to do, is to just produce dense steam, feed it through all these steam de decompressors, adjacent steam generators, and produce a bunch of power. And you are going to produce more power than if you used just a straight-up RF-generating fission reactor. And that's the same for all uh, fission steam fission reactors. You always produce more power producing steam. Um, so, for example, we're producing 7,500 millibuckets per tick of steam. Um, each of these steam decompressors use 2,000, so we're going to need four to use up all the steam uh, at the correct rate. Uh, we could use more, but obviously this is the most efficient design. And so we're producing roughly, uh, well if these are each producing 4,000 RF per tick, uh, then we're going to be producing roughly uh, 15,000 RF per tick. So that's why that's why this is better than steam, just so, so compact and easy to do. And next update I'll show you how uh, Fusion works. Um, and Fusion you're going to need a lot more of these decompressors, but it looks really, really nice. Okay, um, and over here, you can see here I've got a, a setup where I'm using um, TBU to produce a very tiny amount of steam. So I've got 150 millibuckets per tick, and then I'm only producing normal steam, and I can feed that right into a steam generator uh, and produce energy. So there we go, those steam um, fission reactors. And it says here produces roughly 50% more power than a standard RF producing fission reactor. So yeah, they are more uh, energy efficient. Um, so yeah, added dense steam, super dense steam, we've, we've talked about that. Um, added antimatter as a temporary um, synchrotron uh, product. Uh, if you drop this on the floor, by the way, it does create quite a big crater. Um, so be really careful with it. And obviously antimatter bombs are even worse. Antimatter bombs, where you make those, are um, by using eight antimatter. Um, and you get an antimatter bomb. And this creates a huge amount of explosive damage. It makes a massive empty sphere of radius, like 100 or something. So it's pretty dangerous. Very good in wars. So very powerful. Um, and where is the... I was going to use, I think I was going to use a synchrotron to show this off, but obviously that's disappeared. Let's get a synchrotron out just to show where the antimatter appears. Um, the antimatter appears down here in this little counter. And you see here there's a counter in uh, parts per million. So when this gets up to a million, uh, this bar will complete and you'll get a full antimatter. So pretty simple. And the amount of antimatter you generate per tick is dependent on the size of the, the, uh, the setup. So there we go, that's pretty simple. Um, but again, as I, get, as I said, very temporary. Um, eventually the system will become a lot more complicated and cool. Um, added button on the assembler, we've talked about that already. Um, added config option for fusion reactors to asymptotically reach 100% efficiency. Yes, yeah, so normally you're going to need a comparator to, um, to, to uh, make sure your fusion reactor doesn't overheat or go past um, and start losing efficiency. Um, but instead there is now config option so that it slowly but surely reaches 100% efficiency and you don't have to worry about the comparators. So it's basically like an easy mode option. Um, so that's there if you want it. Uh, edited some extra block drops. So yeah, some of the block drops and the dungeon loot changed a bit. Um, some ore generation rates were increased because, for example, uranium was just ridiculously rare. Um, and I didn't realise. Um, so that's now been fixed. Um, changed some other stuff, blah 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 blah. Quietened down the fusion reactor and synchrotron sound effects. Yeah, they were incredibly loud. Um, so they've been quieted down. Uh, in fact, we can probably show that off by going over here. So these are a lot quieter than before. I remember having to really shout over this stuff before. But this is a lot quieter now, a lot more bearable. Let's go back over here. So what's next? Um, slightly nerf the reaction generator again. So now the reaction generator I believe only creates 100 RF per tick, so very basic now. Um, what else? Uh, some ch tweaks to achievements, some of the achievements got moved around. If you didn't know already, there are actually achievements in nuclear craft, so you know you can sort of keep track of where you are with that, so that's just a little, little thing there. Um, Eulorium is no longer processed into uranium. Well, this is unfortunate because unfortunately um, some mods add Eulorium to the ore dictionary as uranium. Um, which means that sometimes this doesn't really work. But if you have mods that don't do that, then Eulorium won't be processed 
um, in the machines like uranium because that's a massive loophole because um, ylorium is really really common and it's you know because big reactors the way they work is quite different from most other mods that use uranium because it just uses up a huge amount of ylorium like all the time um, and it's not as rare as normal uranium so ylorium is no longer processed in the same way but if you do have ylorium and you want to put it through the isotope separator um, there is a slightly different recipe so instead of getting um, again this is a problem because ylorium is added to the uranium ore dictionary um, if you don't have uh, it added to the ore dictionary by another mod you'll normally just get that from ylorium you'll get half the products so it's just l just less efficient and you can see that here in, in here you'll see that there is actually the correct recipe you can see here that's that's what it's meant to be but unfortunately ylorium is added to the ore dictionary which is a shame but never mind um, what else uh, fixed a few crashes, added a few different classes, and that's pretty much it for 1.8. Um, then there was 1.8b, uh, sorry, 1.8a, first of all, obviously, added a few more tool tips. Um, fixed the steam fission reactors producing too much steam, yes, that was a bit of a big bug. Um, I fixed the fission controllers not checking for other controllers properly, yes, but sometimes um, the steam fission controllers and the normal fission controllers could be used on the same uh, multi block, that's now been fixed. Um, there was a crash with Domino's Pizza, which is fixed. There were some missing textures that are fixed. Um, Lithium-ion battery crafting recipes were added. Um, fixed the uh, conflicting assembler recipes. Yes, there's a few assembly recipes that used to conflict. Um, so these, those have been fixed. And there was even more that got fixed in the latest updates in 1.9b. Um, fixed nuclear weapons being craftable in the assembler. So uh, when the configs options were disabled. So there was a bug where you could still craft, for example, nukes when the nukes were disabled in the assembler. Um, what else? Add, added manganese dust oxidizing recipe. So you can, uh, so if you have like metallurgy, which adds manganese, you can oxidize that into manganese oxide. Um, nerf the RTG a little. Um, so RTGs, I think, were 150 RF per tick now, uh, but now they're sorry, they used to be 150 RF per tick, but then they got changed down to 100 RF per tick, and there's a reason for that, which we'll get to. Um, in the next uh, video. Nuclear monsters can now spawn in the nether, so yeah they can spawn in the nether. They're a lot less common in the overworld, but they're in the nether now, so you can find them in the nether. Obviously they're a bit tougher than most other mobs in the overworld, so I decided to make that change because I thought it would make the nether a little bit more interesting. Um, tweak some stats, tweak some ore gen again. Uh, improve the antimatter bomb texture, so now it's got this quite nice glowing texture like that, so it's quite nice. Um, and yeah that was pretty much 1.88 uh, now 1.8b um, quite a big change here the, the electrolyzer now requires an input of water so you can see here there's a water bar you need water um, to make it work as you can see here if we if we run this uh, this is going to take forever let's put some ooh. oh that's incredibly power hungry isn't it let's get another California RTG Here we go. So as you can see, uh, it used up some water. So that's it needs water now, basically. Um, and also in the latest version, you now can only use empty fluid cells. You can't use the water fluid cell recipe anymore, obviously, because it uses up water in the in the recipe. Um, what else? Solar panels now generate a tiny amount of power during dawn, dusk, and the night. So yeah, so it will smoothly move towards producing maximum energy at night. Um, so it won't just suddenly flip to producing energy at night anymore. Um, added some config options for uh, for the heat and energy levels at which, sorry, the heat and efficiency levels at which the um, fission and fusion reactors output their power, uh, output a redstone signal. So you can change the sort of maximum efficiency of a fusion reactor or change the heat level at which um, the fission reactors uh, decide to output a full comparator signal. So that's pretty simple. Um, there was some crash bugs. Fixed graphite block crushing to coal dust instead of graphite dust. That's that's a simple fix. Uh, minor changes to the fuel usage of non-RF machines like the um, metal furnace and nuclear furnace or whatever. Um, some minor other changes. Fix some errors in tooltips. Um, fix some bugs where um, mobs would drop loot even when the the game rule uh, was disabled. So that should be fixed now. Uh, and there were other changes. So that's pretty much 1.8. Um, so overall, some 
new batteries, um, some big changes to fission, well one big change to fission, uh, some, well another big change to fission, steam generation, fission reactors, um, lots of steam related stuff, um, producing, producing steam, uh, and some other little changes here and there. So that's 1.8, and hopefully you enjoyed it. Uh, we're now going to go into the 1.9 episode when we look into what these things are and all the other changes that happened in 1.9. See you then!